Today, Dwayne and I are going to be looking at some footage from when Mary and I rode on the Million Dollar Highway this last uh, month. And uh, it, we've ridden on it many, many times, but this last month was a little bit different in several ways. Oh yeah, usually uh, there's snow covering the mountains and uh, you don't get a chance to see those beautiful fall colors. Right. And I also don't cut my finger almost <laughs> to the bone. Right. And your, uh, your water-cooled Harley usually doesn't overheat. No. <laughs> the water cooling usually cools it, doesn't heat it up. So anyway, this was a good trip. It was a great day. And we're going to just look through this footage and um, make a few comments here and there about what the experience was like this day on the Million Dollar Highway, or as we've been referring to it as malfunction on the Million Dollar Highway. And it was malfunctions on the Million Dollar Highway. This is when we're coming into Silverton from the Molas Pass side, the Durango side, not the Uray side. Mm -hmm. And it's just a beautiful town down in the valley at 9,000 feet elevation. So I assume the reason you're rolling into town is to address your overheating issue. Yeah, um, we had to get some Harley Davidson coolant. We tried some other coolant and it, didn't work as we expected so we found out that this store which is the highest elevation Harley-Davidson store in the world had some coolant there so we went in there and got some coolant and then went down the road a little ways to a truck stop got in the dirt and <laughs> fixed uh, fixed the trike. I bet that was fun. No. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> We did learn a lot. We have a video coming out on how to bleed the coolant and how to change the coolant. I had literally never had a problem, uh, never done any maintenance, nothing with the cooling side, the twin cooled side mm -hmm. of uh, twin, cams, uh, twin cams or inmates before. And I learned a lot on this trip. At the time it was happening, I didn't know if what I was doing was going to fix it or not. I'd never experienced this problem before, and I was just going from what I was reading online. And so, fortunately, it did fix it. But, you know, I had other places to be after this trip. Oh, yeah. And I was wondering, I wasn't wondering, I was saying, I got to get this thing fixed before we get to Arizona to meet up with all the other trikes. Yeah. That was the main thing. And of course we wanted to enjoy the Million Dollar Highway, but more than that, you know, I didn't want to show up in Arizona to ride with a bunch of other trikes and have a trike that wasn't <laughs> functioning. Right, right. Worst case scenario, you could have stayed in Silverton. I mean, there's worse places yeah. to be stranded. And we, we've stayed in Silverton before. It's a beautiful place and, um, uh, the whole area is just amazing riding and, and scenery. The main part of the Million Dollar Highway, which is also known as the 550, it's it's Highway 550, but it goes between, the main part, the fun part, is between Uray and Durango, and really not even as far as Durango. You know, when you start getting closer to Durango, it straightens out. So the the what Mary and I really enjoy is the section you go from Uray to Silverton, mm -hmm. Silverton to Molas Pass, and then past Molas Pass, you go a little bit further, and then the curves sort of stop. One thing I noticed about these curves, you know, a lot of people talk about the dragon or, you know, the pig trail, but a lot of people don't talk about how dangerous this road could be. I mean, look how close to the edge the road just drops off. I mean, you have just a few inches on the other side of that white line, sometimes no inches yeah. before, what, a hundred oh, yeah. foot there's, drop. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of people who won't drive or ride on the Million Dollar Highway. I love it. I mean, if I can't stay between the lines, I don't have any business, <laughs> you know, being on a bike or a trike That's true. or, or even That's true. driving. You just got to stay between the lines. Now, the tempting thing is, you see the scenery is so amazing. and you know, you start looking at the scenery and start drifting off the road, that's where there can be trouble. Yeah. But, I mean, we've seen motorhomes, trucks, we've seen semis, not with a large trailer, but semis, you know, uh, pulling uh, uh, 
flatbeds and stuff on the road. But yeah, it's uh, it's um, some pretty deep drop-offs at some point. Coupled with the scenery, yeah, it can be a dangerous <laughs> combination. If you're wanting to ride the roads fast like I was here, and then you get stuck behind a bunch of cars, that can be frustrating. So what were you doing here? You were just pulling over to stop and let them get some distance yeah, between you? Yeah, sometimes I'll just pull over, stop, let those cars that are going slow in front of me get way ahead, and then before any car comes up behind me, pull out, and then I'll have, you know, one or two miles where I can ride quickly yeah. through the curves before catching up to the cars again. So the footage you captured with the GoPro, I mean, it shows some excellent riding, excellent sceneries, uh, and I know you usually like to get some drone footage you know in the past you've gotten some pretty good footage and I'll pull some of that up here and show but uh, yeah what what went wrong with that yeah and I think you're gonna put in the uh, video footage of the drone over the cliff in the Ozarks that we got mm -hmm. and we came up to this r really nice section where there's several s curves in a row and I wanted to put the drone up and um, it went a little crazy and I'll let the pictures and what I said at the time speak for itself. Okay. Well, I wanted to fly the drone here, so I put it up in the air, but it said altitude too high. I've never seen that before, where it says altitude too high. So I put it up anywhere and it was acting all crazy. And I went to try and catch it and cut my finger really bad. Here's our Band-Aid sprayed some alcohol on it what I wanted to do was get a shot of us riding these curves right here because that would have been really nice to put the drone up get a shot of us riding those curves but never heard of the altitude being too high to fly the drone but obviously it was so Broke a propeller, cut my finger. So now we're headed back to bandage it up right. It's about 45 minutes or so to get back, but I think I'll be okay. But this is right where it was, right here. And uh, yeah, and it hurt, it hurt bad. Um, I was in a lot of pain <laughs> when we were doing this. And I learned what happened to the drone mm -hmm. and the next time we're there, I will be able to fly the drone there. The right. elevation is not too high. Uh, it was just me not being familiar with this new drone that we have. And the other thing is, you know, we've, we've done the fall colors trip where we went to the Northeast in late September, early October, specifically to see the changing of the colors. And we saw more here than we did on our trick that was specifically for the fall colors. Yeah, the scenery is awesome. It's, yeah. I mean, it, it just looks like a Bob Ross painting or something. Yeah. So, Dwayne, there's a big debate that you see on a lot of forums between how fast can a tri-glide go through the curves versus how fast can a two-wheeler go through the curves. I'm not talking about a cross truck or venture bike. I'm talking about a Harley. So you have a soft tail deluxe, an 18 with the better suspension, more ground clearance, would you go through these 15 mile an hour curves at 35 to 45? Uh, I'd certainly try. You'd try? But, uh, you know, being my first time on that road, I'd probably do a little of both. Oh, if it was your fifth or tenth fifth, time. Oh, fifth or tenth, yeah, I would, you know, try to push it. And uh, uh, I'm not trying to insult you, but I believe the track could beat your ass in, the, in those curves. And that's the debate, you know. It's hard. It's hard for people to imagine, but trikes handle so well in the twisties, the tighter the turn, mm -hmm. there's a certain point a two-wheeler is has to lean over. And at some point it runs out of ground clearance or runs out of tire tread, where you can just push the trike through it as long as you don't lift one of the rear tires. Yeah. I don't know if you'd I don't know if it'd beat my ass, I'd probably go off a hundred foot drop before <laughs> I lost <laughs> to the there trike. There are no hundred foot drops. There's <laughs> five hundred and there's two thousand. <laughs> yeah. But that's just amazing, amazing scenery out there. What's crazy about this road is, you know, we, we talked about how dangerous it can be and how there's very little margin for error. 
But you can do everything right and look, the road could give out from underneath you. Yeah, <laughs> they're rebuilding part of the road where it just fell off into the canyon here. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so you'll be updated when our next video comes out. I know personally, this video put the Million Dollar Highway on my bucket list. Also, make sure that you watch the video. If you have a twin cool bike, make sure you watch the follow-up video to this where we talk about how to properly maintain a twin cool bike so you don't end up on the side of the road like I did on this trip. There will be a link above and below to that video that Kevin just referenced on how to bleed your coolant system and how to maintain it. Hit the subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. It helps us out and it's free. Y'all ride safe out there.